Welcome to podcast seven, 700, no, 475. Let's go 700. Host. I like it. We're living <laughs> in the future, bro. We're living in the future. A couple of years from now, we'll be at, uh, we'll be at 700. That's right. A couple of years, a couple of years. We got to come up with a good plan for episode number 500, by the way. That's right. It's going to be a blowout. Yeah. We got to start uh, preparing something for that. But yeah, I'll, uh, I'll start over. Episode 475 with your hosts, Eric Miller and Jesper Rivers. Welcome to the show. How about that? <laughs> Great job, buddy. Great job. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, and today we are talking about our very first hire for Free Wild. That's new- right. Well, we're talking right. about hiring in, ger- in general, right? Like how to that entire process. But yeah, it's uh, it's awesome that we officially hired our first team member for the company. Um, yeah, you know, we've uh, of course hired some contractors, but this is somebody who is, uh, in the team is going to help us start building it. That's right. And you know, what's cool about this. One of the cool things about this new, our new team member. What's that? She listens to get paid for your pad. Boom. What's up, May. Hello, May. <laughs> That's yeah. Cool. Which was, which was awesome. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll dive, we'll go through the, the whole process of how we found her and, uh, hired her for uh, virtual staff staff finder. But yeah, when we, uh, we did our interview and she was like, uh, are you, are you the, the real Jasper from like the get paid for your pad? And I was like, yep, that's me. And she's like, Ooh, that's exciting. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, that is, <laughs> that is exciting. Uh, that's cool, man. <laughs> I didn't know that she was a listener of the podcast and yeah. she, um, she was, well, let's, uh, let's give some background on, you know, what role did we just hire? And let's talk about the process because, you know, this is uh, in Legends X, this is something that we teach pretty quick of like, hey, if, if you're a hectic host or you're just getting started in the business or even if your business is growing right now, you need help. You got to get yourself out of the day to day. This is one of the first spots, one of the first positions to actually hire in your company. Uh, and this is going to be something that actually frees you up quite a bit. So you start working on it versus in it. Right. So um, let's talk about what uh, what role we just hired and let's go into the process of doing that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So we just uh, we had just hired a, uh, a general virtual assistant. So somebody who's going to help us with a pretty wide range of uh, of day to day tasks. Um, you know, all the way from guest communication, I guess guest communication is, uh, is the main thing. Um, but she's also going to help us with, you know, uh, cleaning management or maintenance management, uh, re- writing reviews, like any, all the little tasks that come up on the day to day where it's easy to build a training, uh, and a system, um, as to, you know, such that anybody who has access to the training and the system can, uh, can get the same result as, as we could, right. That's, uh, I think that's the definition of a system actually. Yeah. So yeah, pretty or at um, least, or at least 80% as good as we could. So 80, then we 80. could train, train the additional 20%. Yeah. But one of the, one of the reasons that we wanted to work with May is because she has, uh, she has a lot of experience as an Airbnb case manager. Right. And that's, that's really valuable because, uh, you know, at some point, I mean, so far we've, we, you know, we had pretty good guests, but at some point, uh, I'm sure we're going to have to deal with, uh, the resolution center mm-hmm. and like calling Airbnb and stuff. So having somebody who's worked for Airbnb is, uh, is, is really cool. Um, so that, you know, she might be able to do some tasks even better than us, you know, maybe 110%, oh, sure. 120%. 100%. I mean, dude, <laughs> as, uh, you know, I, I'm not the best person when it comes to customer service. I do my best to uh, over deliver because I know the importance of it. But uh, there's a certain skill set that comes with uh, the patience of dealing with uh, guests and their needs. And um, she obviously has that. So let's uh, let's rewind a little bit. Let's talk about why we hired that position, right? Why we hired the virtual assistant and why this was the first the first spot. And again, the reason why we want to do a podcast about this is like there's so many hosts out there that are running one or two units or even running. Uh, I spoke to somebody the other day who just enrolled into uh, Legends X and they have uh, 20 units or 21 units. And, uh, it's still him and his partner and they do everything themselves. They have zero help outside of cleaning and maintenance. Right. Uh, and this is, this is, you know, it's not an easy role to fill because I, I think, 
I think over the years we've, um, you know, there's been some false belief systems built around hiring a, a VA, a virtual assistant. That is just easy that you just hire a virtual assistant at the cheapest rate that you can find, and then just toss a bunch of tasks at them and they they'll do it. Right. These are actual real human beings who they're not robots. You know, these are real human beings that, uh, you know, they have families to take care of. They have like, this is what they focus on. This is what they specialize in. And we have to find the right virtual assistant, the right human to plug into this role. Because, you know, even though a virtual assistant is, you know, for us based companies are very cost effective to bring on, they play huge roles in our companies. And, oh, yeah. you know, that one of the first things for us to remove our day to day, our time and all these small little tasks is to bring somebody on who is efficient at that. So it was really important for us to like right away, hire somebody to come into the company, start managing, um, managing a lot of the tasks. And by the way, like for the, the, the listeners here, it's like we hired May as our first first team member, but we're also in the process of hiring a bunch of other people, right? For this project that are contractors. We just hired an architect. We just hired a designer. We just hired a contractor and we just hired a property manager to, uh, and we talked about that last week to mm -hmm. support us on the day to day. So we, we went through a hiring phase really, really <laughs> quick, but this was our first team member right? Yeah. Who's building the culture with us from ground, ground up the whole thing. So I think it's really important for, you know, the listeners out there to focus on, yeah, we need all these other contractors, but we need a solid virtual assistant to support us on a lot of moving parts and who you're, who you hire is really, really important. Not just mm -hmm. the hourly rate. I hear people saying like, I, I can get a virtual assistant for $3 an hour. It's like, that shouldn't, that's not what we should be hiring on. We should be hiring on their ability to, to manage all these tasks. So, yeah. um, yeah, yeah. What's your takeaway on that? Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's why I love working with virtual staff finder, right? Cause yeah. I, I, I hired my first VA, I think it was back in 2011, maybe 2012. When I started my first, uh, Airbnb, I actually hired a virtual assistant, but I went through some other uh, platforms like uh, Upwork. Mm -hmm. um, I think there was another one. I can't remember the name, but the way that it works on those platforms is you basically go through a database of, of profiles and you try to find the right person. Super, super time consuming. And then, you know, the whole, like the vetting process and the, and the interview process, like it, everything together, it just takes so much time. And oftentimes I, you know, I, I, I found out a couple months later, I was like, okay, this wasn't really the right person. So working with virtual staff finder, and I think you have experience with them as well now. Yeah. Yeah. So virtual staff finder, uh, I met the CEO of that company years ago when I first went to uh, San Diego, he was just getting the company off the ground. Yeah. And this is when virtual assistants were getting really big, right? Four hour work yeah. week was released. Um, the whole thing that book came out 15 years ago, which is nuts. Yeah. So like the VA world was just starting to grow. So yeah, I've used this company multiple times and uh, you know, there's been some misses where we've hired team members through that staff service, but it was, because one, we weren't clear on the other items that we put into place, which we'll touch on the job scorecard and all the other items that, that you and I built way before we even hired virtual staff finder. But yeah, I love that company, man. They, uh, they do great work. Um, yeah. Yeah. So for everyone who's listening, virtual staff finder, you know, what would you, how would you explain them? Are they, they're a staffing agency for virtual assistants, correct? Yeah, exactly. And just a shout out to the to the CEO. His name is Chris Ducker. Uh, he wrote a book called uh, Virtual Freedom. Mm -hmm. um, he wrote it quite a long time ago. But um, he yeah, he was a he's a really cool person to follow. Um, I got a lot of inspiration from him. Uh, you know, ten years ago when I started uh, my digital nomad life and working with virtual assistants. So shout out to uh, to Chris uh, Ducker. But the what I love about Virtual Staff Finder is they you, you submit a a job description right you you submit like exactly who you're looking for um your skill sets the experience the type of task that you want to uh that you want them to fulfill on uh the time zone that you want them to work in you give all those details to to virtual staff finder 
and then they will find you free candidates, the best free candidates that they can find. And they have a massive, massive database um, of, uh, of, of potential virtual assistants. So um, they are also based in the Philippines where a lot of uh, virtual assistants are uh, from the Philippines um, because they they speak really good English. You know, English mm -hmm. is a is a, is a official second language in the Philippines, which is very rare in uh, for countries to have uh, have English as a second language, right? So, so yeah, the that's what's so great about Virtual uh, Staff Finder is they take the vetting process and the searching process. Uh, they take that over from you and and they present you with free, really solid candidates. Um, and we, we ended up choosing May, but I have to say the other, the other two were, they were pretty strong candidates as well. Yeah. Yeah. And what's cool with virtual staff finder is, uh, wait, what's their fee by the way, it was 500 bucks, 500 bucks. Yeah. And that's, five, so it's that's five, 500, 500 bucks really well spent. Oh yeah, man. Oh yeah. Like $500 to cut down the hiring process. Like we were for overnight success, we're hiring a handful of other positions too. Right. And we went down the path of, you know, we're hiring for enrollment. We're hiring for marketing. We're hiring coaches. We're hiring a ton of people for overnight success. And for one of the roles, we went down the path of going on all the listing sites, right. Uh, and doing all the posts, all the things, um, the amount of applications that we get for people that are just saying, Oh, this sounds interesting. Let me just send in my app. My application was so overwhelming that we had to shut it down and re we deleted everything and we had to revisit like, okay, what's the simplest approach here to find the person that we want for this role? Because we have hundreds of applications to go through. Most of them don't really fit well for this to find the needle in the haystack is so time consuming. Right. Mm -hmm. So to hire for this position, what virtual staff finder does, by the way, they're not sponsoring this at all. We're, we're just big fans of this, uh, <laughs> this platform. Um, what they, what they do for $500, just as you mentioned, right. They bring three candidates, but what I love about it is that they test them on so many different levels. They test them on their uh, ability to speak English. They test on their ability to write English, their typing speed. They test mm -hmm. their internet uh, connection, right? Mm -hmm. um, they also give a list of what they are capable of managing. So like different technologies, you know, uh, you know, Google, Google suites and Slack and all these other things along with their application and their history. They also give um, referrals, not referrals, but um, references. Yeah. References. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which is amazing. And then one of the requirements that we put in there, or one of the, the nice to haves, I should say that we put in there is that they have experience in short-term rentals. And when we got the three candidates, we found May who worked directly for Airbnb. So it makes sense to, she also checked off all the boxes. She just was an awesome candidate and she worked for Airbnb. So we're like, all right, this is our person because now we can train her on how to handle it our way, but she's familiar with the language and the customers and, or the mm -hmm. guests and everything that we need. Right. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a great hire and it took us 500 bucks, uh, 500 bucks. And how many weeks did it take? It, it takes about three weeks, the whole process. Boom. Yeah. But how many hours, this is a good question. Cause you led this, this whole thing. How many hours do you believe that you put in from submit from signing up to hiring may, how many hours do you mm -hmm. think you put into that? I probably spent about, let's say two to three hours with, uh, building the job scorecard and filling out the job description. Um, they then, once you submit the job description, they come back to you and they give you some feedback as well on, on the mm. job description, you know? So they, they really, you know, and again, <laughs> we're not getting paid by them, but, uh, uh, but they read their process is really amazing. Cause not only, not only do they find those people, but they also like, they guide you through the whole process, you know, they give you tips on like, Hey, maybe, you know, maybe you should be more specific here or, you know, explain this better, or just keep in mind expectations as well. Like keep in mind X, Y, Z. Um, so it's, it's just a super smooth process, but I would say, you know, other than the two to three hours to build the job description, you know, hour and a half to interview the free candidates and a little bit of back and forth emailing, you know, in total, maybe like six hours. 
That's so crazy. Uh, it, it, it's crazy because it's you, the amount of time that Aaron has spent on going through applications that we got from LinkedIn on our hiring or our marketing position is unbelievable. He's <laughs> must he must have spent he must have spent an entire week going through applications through that yeah. alone. So it's like the amount of time it takes to to work with this company. So five hundred dollars great investment. And every single time we hire a VA, a virtual assistant, we're always going to go back to that platform and work with them. Mm -hmm. So that, so that's cool. Anything else to add as far as like the value that virtual staff finder brings? Yeah. Or the experience? Uh, couple, yeah. A couple of things actually. Um, <clears throat> number one, they also, you mentioned all the, the details that they provide about the candidate. They also give you a full, uh, personality test result. That's right. As well. That's right. Which is, uh, which is really cool too. And um, who, wh which one do they use again? It's um, I'm not sure. I have to look that up. Ah, uh, it's t it's Tony Robbins' personality. Um, yes, that's right. It's a Tony Robbins. It's a Tony Robbins one. That's right. Yeah. Man, what is it called? Well, what what did you what did you look it up? And I'll uh, I'll I'll share a little bit more about uh, the what, what the value that the virtual staff finder brings because what I really enjoyed as well is they give you they give you a lot of advice on how to how to train and how to manage your your virtual assistant like you know when it comes to pay they they give you like a suggested salary based on you know what's market value um so they give you a lot of support on you know also also getting your your virtual assistant hired and onboarded um they explain a little bit about the culture and so you know there's a whole there's a there's a lot of education uh, behind it it's not like yeah. they just present the candidate and then they're like all right good luck they really guide you through through the whole process and uh, offer a lot of support yeah yeah it's, it's really powerful and on top of that too they add in video uh is it video or audio of the individuals <clears throat> audio audio yeah. so you can actually hear you know for a virtual assistant who's going to be handling communication with guests mm -hmm. you want to have that person be able to communicate clearly as best as possible right in your native language um you know obviously for us english is a must right so being able to communicate clearly is really important so being able to hear them and hear excited they are and the whole thing uh is really powerful so and uh it's called the disc uh, disc assessment, D I S C assessment. Um, yeah. really, really powerful. I've done that multiple times. Um, but it's cool. The, the reason why they go through that is to kind of show you their natural abilities in, in, uh, their natural abilities and strengths. So, you know, that you're hiring the right type of person for the right type of role, right? Exactly, uh, yeah. the right type of personality for the right type of role. So, That's right. um, yeah. Yeah, love that company, man. So I'm excited to uh, excited to have May on board. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and you know, we, uh, last week on on Friday, we actually had a group call with our Legends X students, uh, where we uh, talked uh, about virtual assistants for for about an hour and a half with uh, with Rebecca, and she's you know Rebecca, one of our coaches in Legends X. She's uh, she's really knowledgeable. Uh, she has a team of seven virtual assistants she's she's done an amazing job building that team she's been to the philippines to meet them in person um, i thought that was really cool i thought yeah, that was it's awesome yeah man that's like i've never heard a company that like her and uh, erica actually flew to the philippines to meet their virtual staff and spend time with them like that's that's incredible that's incredible yeah. like it, it changes the mindset of people just focusing on like how do we get the cheapest labor possible and just give them a bunch of tests these are actual real team members of Rebecca and Erica's team, which I really, really respect. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, I, I envision us doing the same. Uh, I have some yeah. real estate in the Philippines, by the way. So that's right. Let's go. Right, right, right on the beach. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> yeah. Team meetings. For, for the people that are listening, and if, if you've never been to the Philippines, uh, it's an incredible country. Really incredible country. Everybody speaks English, and it's I think it's like a collection of seven thousand islands. Yeah, and they all have amazing white sand beaches. It's it's in my opinion, I've been to a hundred countries. I would say the Philippines is 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 one in my top three favorite countries in the world. Yeah, I was just watching a uh, a new show. Let me see if I can find it. Um, a new show that just came out. Uh oh. Um. 
Joe, I think his name is Joe Coy. Yeah, Joe Coy. If you search Joe Coy Netflix series, um, just came out um, just the other day and I was just watching it and it's all about he's from the Philippines and he brings Netflix there and they follow the culture of like, he's a comedian, but he's also into music and art and the whole thing. And he taps into that and he talks about the 7,000 uh, islands and the culture of the Philippines. And it's really, really beautiful. Um, so I'm excited to check it out. I've never been there. Um, so I think it'd be awesome. Yeah. It's called Joe, uh, Joe. Wow. There we go. Joe Coy coming in hot. Yeah. So I would check that out. That would get, give you some understanding of the the culture there yeah yeah it's a good tip i uh, i'm down to watch that um but yeah anyway so you know philippines awesome country um but as i mentioned we were we were going through um questions from uh from our students from our legends x students because a lot i would say like that you know hiring a va is something that a lot of our legends x students have accomplished um, also our previous classes and, uh, uh, a lot of them are, are, you know, who are in our rising stars, my mind now they're, they're raving about the experience, you know, like it's, it, it, yeah, the results that people have been getting, you know, with the help, uh, of these virtual assistants been, uh, been really incredible. So, uh, we, we had a specific call to, uh, to answer some questions. So I thought it'd be cool to, uh, to kind of touch on the, the most commonly asked questions questions about uh, virtual assistants right um the first the first question that comes up uh always is um you know a, a virtual assistant obviously works eight hours a day and they only work monday to friday they don't work on saturday and sunday right so when it comes to guest communications you know people the students always ask like what shift should they be taking over should they what hours should they be working right and there's no right and wrong answer on that. Um, it just depends on on what you're looking for. We opted uh, for for her to cover our night our night hours, right? So that we, you know, we we have four cabins now in in free wild, so we're still able to manage it, you know, during the day. Um, but you know, it's nice to have somebody uh, who who takes over during the night when we're sleeping, so we can just go to sleep and we don't have to look at our phones when we wake up mm -hmm. we know that someone's taking care of that but you know other people opt to you know for for them to fill in their busiest hours right it's like when are the most you know request booking requests and airbnb messages coming in you know probably i would say probably 10 a.m to 4 p.m or something is probably the most active times right mm -hmm. so that's another good choice um you know, to have, to, to have them take over that shift. Yeah. I think, you know, I think the shifts really come down to where you're at. Right. So as of right now, we're early stages of our company, but obviously once we start building and buying more properties, we're not going to be managing the day-to-day -day of customer service anymore. Right. Like what we're doing now is building the system. So then we can get ourselves out of it. So our virtual assistants and eventually our head of, uh, customer service, guest experience, we'll be taking care of all that, right? In the early stages, I think the the biggest risk is always nighttime, the nighttime shift, right? Because it's like at the end of the day, 10 p.m., you sit down to, you know, either go to sleep or watch a movie, whatever it is, go out and have some fun. Something's happening. They're asking questions, whatever that is. You know, you want that to be taken care of. You don't want to be the reactive one that's going through that. Um, so I always looked at covering the nighttime shifts. They're also watching our noise aware. They're watching, you know, the, the, the cameras and just making sure everything is good. If there's a red flag, they'll reach out to us and, and get a hold of us. Right. Um, but with that, with that said, it's also, you know, really comes down to what you're looking for. What we found is one of the biggest challenges is hiring somebody from the Philippines to work our times, PST times in the mornings, because it's in the middle of the night for them. And sometimes that works. But what we found is a lot, of, most of those individuals that we bring up, bring on burn out really, really quick, right? Mm -hmm. They burn out quick from working the day shifts. Um, with, 
however, we have hired some people in the past that that really enjoy the night shift, their night shifts. Um, but for us, we found like it was really easy to hire somebody that's going to cover our nighttime shift. It's their daytime shift. Um, yep. And then there's lap, you know, there's some some uh, uh, crossover there between, you know, us signing off and then her coming on so we can manage that transition really well. So yep. I think it really comes down to what the individual host is looking for. Um but that's what I would recommend and then start building from there because that nighttime shift for the Philippines is a challenging one. You got to find the right person to maintain that. Yeah, no, for sure. There are, there definitely are people that are, uh, that are happy to do the night shift, but the virtual staff finder also indicates that it's easier. There's a bigger pool. If you're looking for somebody to work during the day, there's a bigger, bigger pond that you can, uh, or bigger right. pool that you can, uh, that you can um, uh, select from. So for sure. Um, <clears throat> all right. Question number two that comes up a lot is um, what are tasks that a, a virtual assistant can fulfill on? And the reason that students always ask this is because when hosts start thinking about virtual assistant, they always think about the guest communication, right? They always envision like, Oh, that's perfect. Like if I don't have to, you know, wake up in the middle of the night to, to send these Airbnb messages, if I have somebody doing that for me, that's great. But then the next thought is like, well, but that's like, that's not a full-time job. You know, if you, if you have a couple of listings, like or five listings or 10 listings, it's not a full-time job. So like, what, what else can a virtual assistant do? Right. And that's, that's a really good question. And, and, and like, I, like I mentioned earlier in this podcast, like there's so much, there's so much that you, you, a virtual assistant can do. It all depends yeah. on your systems and your training, right? And, yep. and that's something that Rebecca always preaches. And to give some background on that, Rebecca, I think, has a team of seven, seven people. And they are pretty much like managing 90% of the business. Yeah, it's kind of insane. <laughs> you, you, you know, so there's there's a lot. There's a lot. Like, you know, so what we always recommend is like, in Legends X as well, we have a system for that. We have a, a really cool sheet where we have our students like fill out like, okay, what are you what are you doing during the day? Like write down like everything you do, create this whole list of tasks that you do every single day and figure out like what are the tasks that you don't want to do anymore? What are the tasks that what drains energy from you? What yep. are the tasks that you want to get off your plate? And you'll see that you'll come up with a long list of, uh, of tasks. And pretty much as long as you don't need to be on the ground. Right. Right. You can pretty right. much outsource it. If yeah, you have the right get, systems and training. Yeah. Let me, let me talk on that a little bit is uh, something actionable for everybody uh, on this too. Like, obviously we have a in-depth system inside legends X that we bring our students through and we help them action it. And it's something that they continue to action, but for every, literally this is how, where it came from. Uh, and this is something that, anybody who's listening can start actioning this today is a very easy way to understand where your time is going uh, on a daily basis and then what to start um, off offloading to your virtual assistant is um, I started doing this years ago when I moved into the Epic Entrepreneur House. We had a, uh, a sheet of paper put a sheet of paper next to your desk, wherever you're working throughout the day um, with a pen. I like to write it down because it's something physical that you can see and touch and it becomes a bit more real than just another spreadsheet on your computer that you're jotting down. But get a legal size pe pad, whatever it is, and a pencil or pen. And as you're working from the moment you start working to the moment that you start, uh, you stop working, every single task that you're doing, you're writing down. And you write down with the time. So right now it's 12.33 p.m. talking to Jasper on the podcast, right? And then when 12.45 comes along, it's taking lunch break, blah, blah, blah. 1 p.m. I started doing this. And what you start recognizing is throughout the day, you start stacking up all these tests. But what you also want to do is every single time you break focus of something and you pick up your cell phone to look at Instagram or you switch tabs to go on to news or Netflix or whatever's grabbing your attention, you jot that down. So it's like, okay, I'm sitting here to, uh, I don't know, 
write out all of our reviews and you're sitting there, it's 1230, but then 1233, you pick up your phone and look at Instagram because writing reviews is boring for you, whatever. And your brain wants some attention. Uh, and you recognize that you stop and you write down 1233, picked up Instagram 1234, got back to jotting down, uh, you know, reviews, whatever that is. Do that for one week. It's very challenging to do. Do that for one week and challenge yourself to write down every single task, text messages, everything. And you start seeing, you, you notice a couple of things. One is you notice where your attention goes throughout the day. So you can start challenging yourself to be more focused and getting rid of distractions. It's like, well, crap, this week I spent seven hours on Instagram alone. All right, let's delete this off my phone and I'll only sign in uh, on the weekends, right? Whatever that is. So that gives you a bit more, you know, some power to be more, uh, productive throughout the week, but then you can start recognizing where your time is going on tasks. And then going back to what you're saying, this is one thing that you and I did early in our, our business was like, what is, what do we, uh, love and loathe, right? What gives us energy? What takes us, takes energy from us, right? For me, I can go to projects all day long, talk to contractors and really build the vision of what we're building. What takes energy for me is accounting, right? It's like, I can't do accounting. It's, I can do it, but it just, it, it's like me running through mud, right? It's very difficult <laughs> for me. For you, it's easy for you. It's like, it's not the most exciting thing, but you enjoy it. So you took that, that on and I'm taking on something else in the business. So this is the, a really good way to start getting tasks off your desk is you start recognizing like, oh, I spent five hours this week leaving reviews. I spent six hours this week doing bookkeeping, all this other stuff. And you either put a plus sign or a minus sign next to each one of those tasks. And if it's giving you energy, you put a plus sign. If it's taking energy, you put a minus sign. And then the things that you start outsourcing are all the ones that are repeatable by somebody else that doesn't rely on you, right? Um, where you don't physically have to do that. And the ones that have a minus sign next to it. It's just little things, little things here and there. It's like, okay, now you're going to start leaving reviews. Now you're going to start documenting and doing all the bookkeeping stuff. Now you're going to start doing this. You start building the systems around that. And what that does is that gives you freedom and work on the business and into the things that actually gives you energy, right? Mm -hmm. So that's something that's actionable. I started doing that at the entrepreneur house. And then, uh, you know, I just recognize like, first off, I recognize, man, I, I waste a lot of time on things that don't actually matter like Instagram and all the other things. Uh, and then two, it's like, oh, there's a lot of stuff here. I don't need to be doing that. Somebody mm -hmm. else could be doing better than me or as good as I, as me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And, and those little interruptions that is, that costs so much time because if you go, if you go on Instagram for like five minutes, you're not losing the, just losing those five minutes. I think they did a study once yeah. and they, they, uh, they looked at how much time it takes for people to to get into like full flow and you know 100% productivity working on a certain task if you interrupt for a couple minutes on Instagram it, I think it takes like on average another 15 minutes to get back to that really focused uh, state so one thing that I do is um, there's a little work cafe here in my building here in, in Panama and I made it a habit to every morning at 7 a.m I, I go to that cafe and, and there's no one there yet you know it's too early. And I literally turn on my computer and for the first like hour and a half or sometimes two hours, I just shut, I don't turn anything on. I don't look at my phone. And I just like, I just look at what I have to accomplish and I don't do anything else. I don't look at the news. I don't look at Instagram. I don't look at nothing. And that's like a game changer for me because like I get so much work done in that, in the first hour and a half and it feels so good. And like it's 9 a.m. And I'm like, oh, I already did. 30% yeah. of what I'm supposed to do today. You know, that makes you feel uh, so much yeah. better. I love it, man. Yeah. There's two things on this. One is uh, the book, the one thing. So just read that book. Um, I mean, I know you and I've read that multiple times and it's super powerful. So if you want to learn about that, read the one thing. And then there's another good resource that Asana 
that we used to use Asana um, came out with. If you go to asana.com slash resources slash multitasking, it goes into how much time you lose when you multitask, mm. right? And uh, it's a discipline as entrepreneurs uh, start growing their business that they have to develop is the, the ability just to focus on the one thing that's going to bring the most value to your business. And this is the whole idea of getting low level tasks off your desk so you can focus on the bigger thing that's going to knock down all the dominoes. Right. And that's what the one thing talks yeah. about. Um, so this is, you know, that, that timesheet of what we were just talking about is uh, probably one of the most valuable things you can do. If you guys are considering hiring a virtual assistant is before you even get down that path, you go through that process for one week and recognize where your time is going. And I promise you most of the stuff that you're working on, somebody else can do uh, as good as you, or at least 80% as good as you. And then you can train the additional 20 for that improvement. So yeah. um, that's a really, really important task. Um, yeah, man, any other questions or is there anything that you want to fill in on what we did to prepare prior to even hitting up virtual staff finder to hire? No, it's just, uh, it's mostly just getting really clear on, um, the tasks. So that's why it's important to do, uh, to do this exercise that you mentioned, uh, before you build out the job description, because you have to understand like, what are, what do I actually want to get on my plate first? But that's already yep. step one. You know, what do you want to get off your plate? We already done that, you know, a while ago. So I already had that, but, um, but yeah, that's the first step. And then building out that job description, um, with not only the tasks, but also like what skill sets are you looking for? you know, communication or like attention to detail for us. Like it was also things like growth minded because um, our culture and our company is like, we love to grow as a person and we love to grow uh, in our business, love to learn, you know, taking feedback, improving uh, open and honest communication, um, you know, everything that's, that's relevant uh, to your business Um you, you have to be very, very specific because the, the, the thing is, the more specific you can be with your job description, the better the candidates that virtual staff owner can, can provide. Right? Yeah. So those yeah. are really the, the, two, the two steps. Well, yeah. And, you know, to add to the job description, one thing that we always start in is the actual job scorecard. Right. So the job scorecard yeah. is the best way to start building the job description. I think a lot of people get lost in the idea of like, okay, we need a job description. So we, we build all these, this big phrase and words and all these things to kind of paint the picture of what we need, but we have to go granule into exactly who we're looking for, the type of personality, the exact test that they're going to be doing the whole thing. So there's a process to hiring a virtual assistant, hiring anybody versus just jumping on and just hiring somebody who can handle some tasks for you. It's like, let's get super clear because it takes time and money to hire people and it takes time, money, and emotions to fire the, the wrong people that you hired. Right. And it's like, we have to hire the best people so we can grow with them and they can grow with us for years. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so job scorecards are super important and that yeah. that's the, um, you know, we have plenty of resources on how to build those. And, you know, for the ones that are considering to get involved in legends X, that's a, that's a big thing that we go into is how to build job scorecards and hire, mm -hmm. uh, the right people. So yeah, uh, get clear on where your time's going, what you can get off your desk, build that job scorecard that then turns into the job description, then use that to hire. And if you're hiring virtual assistants, obviously we recommend virtual, virtual staff yep. finder as a resource. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go into the third most common question that we get is, um, can a virtual assistant take phone calls? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, no, that's, uh, yeah. you know, a lot of, yeah, it's interesting. Like, um, we get that question a lot and, and that's one of the, one of the reasons that a virtual assistant is so powerful because we use a technology called ring central. And anyone from anywhere in the world can log into this app, which is on desktop, but also on, on, on iPhone or any other type of smartphone. And it has a US number and you can use it as a US number. All right. So I'm in Panama City right now. I could pick, I could log into Ring Central and call a US number. And the person on the other side of the line won't have any idea that I'm not even in the country. 
they just see a US number pop up and you know they hear me speaking, but they don't know I'm in Panama. Right. right? So with, with the help of that technology, um, you can have your your virtual assistant take all sorts of calls. Yeah. And that's I mean, that's really powerful because that's a, that's a big time consuming thing that people want to get off their plates. Yeah. So Ring Central, uh, you know, that's just one one company. But essentially what you're looking for is what's called a VPN, uh, a virtual private network, I think it is. And uh, essentially what that does is you're calling over um, the Internet right at the end of the day. So Ring, I love Ring Central. I love it for our team. And, you know, we have you and I set up one number uh, for our company within that. And our, our guests call and communicate to that number. And then now our, our, uh, boots on the ground staff communicates to that number as well. So yeah. I get notifications, you get notifications and our new assistant may gets notifications. So we're That's all tied right. into it. It's not the most, I wish it was a bit more, um, dynamic to where we can name the text threads and, you know, like it's a, the inboxes were a bit dynamic. Maybe they'll improve, but it's an awesome process to where if someone's calling in the middle of the night and you and I are sleeping, it will ring on all three of our phone numbers or phones mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and may can pick that up and, and deal with it. Right. Exactly. Um, yep. And text from that number as well. And by the way, I'm going to have to correct you. It's voice over IP, not VPN voice over. Oh yeah. yeah. VPN is a, uh, VPN is very useful too. I have a VPN. Yeah. Yeah. VPN, that's more of uh, like a private search, right? VPN. Yeah. It's, it's essentially, it's a service where you can change your IP address. That's right. So, that's so for right. example, I'm in Panama. I can't watch anything on television in, in my home country in the Netherlands mm. because it will say like, Oh, you're not, you're not in, in, in our country right now. You, you don't have access to this. I just click on my VPN and I set it, set my IP to the Netherlands and suddenly I can watch everything. Right. Plus, That's right. plus it's, uh, it's, uh, it's encrypted. Mm -hmm. So it's also, uh, it's also, uh, uh, provide some, uh, some extra security. Right. So, uh, so my apologies. It's a, uh, uh, voice over IP. That's voice right. over IP. Voice over IP. Right. Yeah. So that's what you're looking for, um, which is, again, Ring Central is what we found to be the best for us. Um, we have everything tied into that. That's where our uh, noise aware alerts get sent to you and everything. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, I think VAs can take calls again. You have to hire the right person who is familiar with being on calls uh, and comfortable with communicating on, uh, over the phone. But, yeah, without a doubt, you know, May's going to be on the phones yeah. as well. Yeah, and she, uh, <clears throat> I'm sure she's going to do a great job because she was a she was an Airbnb case manager, so she has a lot of experience being on the phone with hosts. So if we ever get into a situation where we need to talk to one of them uh, to resolve a case, then she understands like the other, you know, the other side of the line. So, yeah, yeah, that's uh, so those are the the three most important questions that people ask. And um, just to kind of wrap this up, <clears throat> you know, I think uh, the the biggest pitfall or the biggest um, you know, mistake that uh, students make when they, when they hire a virtual assistant, and you kind of mentioned it, is they go too fast, right? They recognize like, okay, I need somebody to take over these tasks, and they go straight to finding the virtual assistant without having that clear job scorecard, without having that clear uh, job description. And then what happens is they're going to hire the wrong person, they don't have any training and any systems in place to train that person. So suddenly it's like, oh, this person now works for me. Okay. How do I actually tell them what to do? And that right. becomes time consuming if you don't have the trainings and the systems. Then there comes frustration. And a month later, to, you know, they fire the person. Then they say, okay, well, virtual assistant is not for me. So just wanted to close it, uh, close it off with that. Be patient, be patient with everything in business, right? It's like we got to, especially for hiring. It's um, that famous phrase of like uh, hire, hire slow, fire fast, right? Because it's like, if you hire the wrong person, it's just going to, it's going to really weigh you down mentally, emotionally, everything, right? So, and same thing for that person, right? So you want to hire the right person, get super clear on those roles. Because once you do hire them, 
and you do hire, like we just also in uh, overnight success hired a EA, an executive assistant. And she's based here in the States, uh, very high end, you know, uh, a player in her role where the moment she came in, she started freeing us up with so many big items that we were working on uh, throughout the day. And there, you know, the, the EA is working directly with, with me and you right at a higher level an executive level where the virtual assistant is dealing with the repeatable tasks that, um, you know, that are behind the scenes. Right. So yeah. hi, if you hire the right person, it's going to free you up super, super fast. So that's right. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's right. I think uh, virtual staff finder saved our butt. I'm excited, right. uh, to, excited to see how this turns out. Yeah. And uh, for people who are interested in uh, working with Overnight Success, we have a hiring page as well. Uh, OvernightSuccess.io slash hiring. We currently have two positions open, a uh, digital content manager and a sales rep. So um, if you're interested, check it out. Uh, we'll be updating that page in the future with, with more, uh, if more uh, roles become uh, available as well. So keep an eye on that. That's right. That's right. All right. Let's wrap this up. Um, we'll, uh, we'll see everybody next week on Friday and uh, Eric, thank you for your time. It's been a pleasure. And, uh, to the listeners, thank you for listening and Adios. We'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.